had a student ask for some help with a slide troubleshooting a situation where they're having trouble getting the slide that they had designed to animate exactly the way they wanted to. So go ahead and turn this into a lesson here. And this synthesizes another couple of lessons in the course, and that is doing some grouping and doing some animation and then also using a tool that is very helpful in these situations, and that is the selection pane. The reason why the selection pane is so helpful is because a common scenario is that you're getting a slide that someone else has designed or you've got some corporate deck and it may have been put together uh, not the way you wanted to and you kind of want to figure out what's going on in the slide. So that's what we'll start with here. So this is the exact slide that was sent in with some identifying information removed. And as I said, we'll start with the selection pane just to kind of see what all is on the slide. Because as you click around, you can see that there's objects here, objects here, there's a text box, there's a shape drawn, same thing over here. There's some arrows that have been added to the slide. But to see all of these elements in one list, we can use, once again, that selection pane. Now the confusing thing about the selection pane is that it's not something that you can get to with one of the tabs on the ribbon. You might think it's in the design tab, but it's not there. You have to select a shape first. So if you select any object that's on the slide, you get the drawing tools, and in the format tab of the ribbon, now you can go and you can use, in the arrange group here, you can use the selection pane. So that'll bring this thing over here, and it will highlight what is currently selected, whatever that thing is. So you can see in this particular slide that it consists of a bunch of rectangles, circular arrow, circular arrow. So this is the sandwich that I refer to in other lessons that is kind of the visual representation top to bottom of what you see in two-dimensional space right here. Now, one of the nice things about the selection pane in terms of helping you stay organized within a slide is that you can double click any of these entries and you can do a rename. So if it helps you to rename a particular text box or if it helps you keep track of what's on your slide by renaming the group, you should also be able to select the group, give it a double click, and now you can edit that name of the group. So I'll just rename this quadrant one shape and also I can click and drag it up in the selection pane and reorder things. Now, when you reorder things, it can sometimes change the way that sandwich is laid out. So, for example, if I take the circular arrow and move it to the very bottom, it may hide it. It may put it behind other elements on the slide. So you may want to do that. You may not to. In terms of how this slide will turn out, it's really not going to make a huge difference because we're going to animate things in one at a time. And so as we continue to investigate, eventually we get to what I think is, in this particular instance, the root cause of the difficulty. And that is in this group eight with these items here, you've got this text box, but then you've got this strange little box within a box. And then if I were to click there, rectangle 35, it looks like this has been drawn as an additional item and positioned within this group here. So... It's not behaving the way that some of these other groups are where you have a text box here and a freeform shape. This rectangle could have, what I suspect happened is that this was inserted as a shape and drawn as a, a rectangle shape and then put text within that shape. These other items here were drawn as text boxes. So now that I've found what I think is the root cause, I'll just select this text box and make sure that it's selected, I'm not in text edit mode, and I'll go ahead and hit delete on my keyboard. Now I've got, the group went away because I've only got one thing, this freeform 33, but of course I can group these things together. So I'm gonna first drag this up by rectangle 35 and also select freeform 33, this object here. So now with these two things selected, I will go ahead and group them up. So I can go back to format here and I can group them into a group. So now it's called group nine. I'm gonna go ahead and rename this group nine and I'm going to rename it quad one text. Now notice also that it looks a little bit different than the others. I'm gonna to have to move this underneath the other one so that it is behind. Now I could have used other commands to do this. I could have sent this to the back or at least sent it backward within the slide using some of these commands up here. As a last note before we move on, I could have tackled this in other ways. I could have removed this rectangle altogether and just made a duplicate of another text box. So just tried to format 
uh, this exactly the way that these other things were formatted on the slide. So there's more than one way to skin the proverbial cat here. So this is just the approach that I'm taking uh, so that I didn't have to delete something that was already created on the slide. I could delete something that was there, but it wasn't doing anything. It was an empty text box. So now I'm going to take a moment and do the same thing with the other items in my slide so that I can look at them and know what I'm looking at. So now, as you can see, I've taken a moment and I have regrouped or just at least renamed most of the groups that are already there. And I got rid of one of the things that was there and not doing anything. So now my slide's a little bit better organized. Now let's get to the actual crux of the request that I got, which was how do we animate these things onto the slide to match the, present, the, the style that I want to present this in. So for that, of course, we are going to go to the animations tab of the ribbon. And then we are going to use the animation pane. You don't have to use the animation pane, but again, it's going to be easier, I think, if you're able to kind of see the list of animations as you are building them. So what did the student want to be animated first? This shape right here, quadrant one, and then the text here, then quadrant two, and then the text here. So we'll just do the animation for quadrant one and then the text, and then we'll be able to repeat this our way around the slide. So with the group selected, I'm going to go up here and fade this in. So over here in the animation pane, you see the animation that's been added. You see that it is playing on click rather than with other things. So you can select it. You can change the duration, the delay. So I'm going to change this to two seconds. And so it'll animate in a little bit more slowly. So slowly there. And then after a moment, I want this to animate in automatically. So I'm going to have this animate. After selecting it, I'm going to have it fade in and it is going to happen after the previous and you can see the timeline of the animation and this one is going to be a fast animation in. So now I have the ability to kind of check my work as I'm going along. I can start and that's going to fade in and then the text is going to fade in automatically. I'm going to escape out of this. I could have also previewed this right from the animation pane by selecting the first animation and playing from that animation. So now it's really a matter of just repeating these animations with the other groups that I have on the slide. I'll go ahead and do that now. So after a moment or two, I have been able to just recreate the same animations on each of my four quadrants here. So once again, I can play from the beginning if I want to preview how this is all going to look, or I can preview from any particular point. So I can play from here. That's going to fade in, and then... After two seconds, that's going to automatically fade in. Now, of course, if you want longer delays, you can do that. If you want longer animations, shorter animations, of course, you have full control. Now, the re remaining thing is to animate in these arrow shapes. So once again, I'm going to keep things relatively simple here. We'll just do a quick zoom here, and the duration is half of a second. And that's also going to start on a click. And then the last thing is that shape there and we will do the same thing. We will zoom and half a second here. So these last two arrows are going to animate in on a click. When I put it all together, I'm going to click to start the animation. I'm going to speak about quadrant one. Here are the four items in quadrant one that I want to speak about. And then when I'm ready as the presenter, I'm going to click again. Now I'm going to start to talk about quadrant two, and this is what's important in quadrant two. I'm going to click again. Quadrant three is going to animate in. I'm going to click again, quadrant four, and then I can speak for however long I want to talk about quadrant four items. And then when I'm done, I'm going to start talking about the virtuous circle of all these things by clicking once for the arrow and clicking again for the other arrow. So that is the synthesis. This is how you can take someone else's slide that they've completely messed up and left you very confused and quickly kind of clean things up and get it to behave the way you want to. First with the selection pane and then use grouping in conjunction with that selection pane and then by working with the animations in the animation tab and then paying attention to your timing options here and the order of your animation in the animation pane. If you have something similar come up at your place of work and you're stuck, then we're here to get you unstuck. Just drop us a line at support at likeabosslearning.com and we'll do our best to get your question answered.